So today we're just going to go over two apps that come in handy. We're going to talk about Before You Fly, great app. And we're also going to talk about Air Control, another handy app. The two complement each other well. So um, these are the two I'm going to recommend. Of course, there are others out there. So um, if you're happy with what you have and, and are unsure about what else is out there, then this video might be for you. Okay, or if you're just starting out, great, you know, watch these, download them, try them, and, and see what works best for you. All right, so we're going to start with the Before You Fly app. And the Before You Fly app is really handy. Okay, we're going to launch it. And you see, it tells you where you are. And let's say if I want to fly there, I just drop the little thingy there, right? And you see how it says here, I'm clear for takeoff, which is great. No act, active advisories, maintain situational awareness. Now, if I scroll a little bit, I could also maybe plan a flight there, but it's controlled airspace. Doesn't mean you can fly, right? You just have to get a lance and it's class D. Um, oh, which is nice because you have um, permissible up to 400 feet. But if you go, let's say here, right? Um, Airspace authorization required, see details below. Okay, so class D airspace, right? Um, so it's going to be a little tricky. It looks like, wow, what time is it? Two o'clock in the morning, and apparently there are people flying in the area. Um, inactive, get a lance, uh, Teterboro, etc. cetera. Uh, medical center, these are just notifications. And more information is there. Uh, it tells you uh, controlled airspace, low altitude only, 24 hours, effective, etc. Right? And of course, you click that. We'll talk about the lances later. Um, but we're just going to go back to where we were. Okay? So we're here. And so clear for takeoff, which is great. Right? And this just is standard practice, good practice. Um, not everyone does it, but it's something you want to do before you fly. And if someone else has the app, you'll know about other drones in the area. Okay, so we have a, we're going to click on the checklist, right? Your health, of course it's good. Pilot state of mind, oh, you got to be crazy. Pilot condition, um, and aircraft inspection. Always check your aircraft. Area of operation, I have set up a safe area. Make sure the area you set up is great. Airspace compliance. If you if you had to get a lance and need a lance, you would check this, right? Airspace safety, right? TFRs and temp temp TFRs. In case you don't know, it says it right there. They're temporary flight restrictions, and that does happen. I would say if the General Assembly or some public figure is coming to town, you'll get a temporary. All right, situational awareness, right? And We'll click next. Plea flight workflow complete. You're done. We click next. Notify and fly. Click next. Recreational, commercial, government. You decide. First responder. It's all up to you. I'm going to select recreational. And of course, start time, duration, 60 minutes. Ceiling is 400. Now, you want to make sure that whatever the ceiling is for here, it matches in the drone. So let's say in your case, I, I wouldn't put 400, I put 395, right? Purpose recreational. Because um, even if you get authorization to fly, you want to make sure that your drone is set at the maximum height it can go, okay? And then you file flight. It's just, it's just standard um, safety precautions that you want to take because what if you forget? Um, then, you know, you'll have to answer to uh, the FAA. I'm not a robot. Um, crosswalks. Let's see. That's a crosswalk. That's a crosswalk. That's a crosswalk. Let's see if I can get that one. Verify. And that's it, right? If I close it, I'm clear for takeoff, which is great. Now, the only downside, they'll probably fix this during the update. You see how this is green? I notified and fly, so the color status should have changed, right? So I'm going to go there, 
and go back to the Before You Fly app. Now, when it launches, it's yellow. Now, they should fix this. By the time uh, in the future, sometime when you're watching this video, you, it'll probably just auto-populate and the color will change. See? Drone flight area, status active. And you would see this if you had launched the Before You Fly app, you could see if there are other people flying in the area. So that's how that works. So feel free to pause and go back and watch that. But now let's say you want to fly um, here, right? Let's try there. Clear for takeoff. Let's see if there are any no advisories. Okay. How about there? Controlled airspace. See? Here you go. Permissible altitude authorization 200 feet. And now remember, if you get a lance, you want to set your DJI controller to the maximum height of, let's say, 195. Just to be safe, right? 200, um, whatever. All right, so Teterboro Class D airspace. So, but that's fine, right? So you just get your lands, and everything it auto populates electronically. So basically, this is back in the day, you had to do this. You had to file the paperwork and wait for approval, etc., and call. Now, let's just say get a lands. This is where the other app launches. In case you're wondering which app this is, we're going to go back to the home screen. Air control. See that right there, right? But we're going to go back into the Before You Fly app. So when you click, that's why the two complement each other really well, right? So now with um, air control, you're going to go back because Before You Fly was like, hey, I can't do that, okay? You're going to have to open up my friend. All right, so which is fine. So let's say, you see here with, with air control, it tells you how high you can go in certain areas. So let's say I want to fly there in Garfield, really nice little town. Okay, you're going to have to click get a land. So I'm going to click, um, in this case, it would be recreational. Actually, yeah, we'll do recreational. And you see that little area? That's the area I'm going to be flying in. And it already tells you, see that? See, two, eligible for auto approval up to 200 feet. So it will automatically approve you up to 200 feet. So I'm going to click 200. Okay. Now remember, you're gonna set your your RC controller to a maximum of, of 195, just to be in the safe. Okay, because sometimes uh, DJI products can be glitchy. All right. So then we click next. Okay. When and how long? There we go. All right. Scroll. Make sure you read everything. Now you see that night operations are only available for commercial. Part 107 operators who have completed required FAA training testing, which I have. So um, in your case, hopefully you're doing this during the day. Okay. So if I go back to missions, no missions, go back home, weather, I'm going to get Lance again. I'm going to click commercial because I have my part 107. Okay, now remember, you would click recreational if um, you're during the day, okay? This is just for the experience of the app. Click next. Eligible for auto approval, um, which is great. Look, it says TEB, authorizing airport, airspace class is D, which is great. If you're not sure what that means, you can look in the book or online. Um, duration. Uh, I'm not sure if I, you know, most likely this would be set in the beginning. Uh, so let's go back. Um, or maybe that's as long as the lance will last for. Okay. Which is great. All that information is there. Click next. Once I click agree and submit, which I'm not because I'm not going to be flying, um, you, you'll have your lance and then you can just go back to the Before You Fly app and launch. But most likely this, is, right, you want to make sure you're there in that area because, remember, it said it's going to be good for two hours, right? So if I'm here in Glenrock, go back to where I was, back, and let's see, if I go back, 
to where I was. Too bad there's no home button like you see on other GPSs. If I go back to where I was, see, I'm here, right? And I want to get the lands for over there. I, that land said it was only going to be good for two hours, so I have to make sure I make it from here to there within that, let's say, 30-minute period, and then it'll give me like give me a uh, hour, 30-minute flight time. But remember, you can always renew it, and that's how um, these two apps complement each other really well. So that pretty much sums it up, and I hope this helps you during your first flights um, and in many other flights.